What's going on guys? So I was tagged by Randy over at Fragrance, the channel Fragrance Dude, to bring you five signature scent worthy fragrances for men. Now I have covered this topic a few times in the past, but as an ever growing, ever changing collection, there's stuff coming in, there's stuff coming out, which this has changed. There are three fragrances that I would consider much better signature scents than some others I've discussed in the past that are in this video. So thank you Randy for the tag and uh, at the end of the video, uh, we'll see what we'll do as far as tagging others, but uh, let's definitely get into this. I've got five that I just think are wonderful for this that I've been wearing myself lately, and some that I'll always recommend. as a great signature scent if you're just looking for that one. So stay tuned. Starting with, if you're just looking for that one, this is always that one that I recommend. It's more affordable niche, it's great performance, it's mega versatility, it dresses up, dresses down, goes on dates, to work, casual, it can do it all. It's Mencera Cidrat Boise, the original. Yeah, the Intense is out now, and admittedly I have been wearing the Intense a little bit more, but I have a cooler climate to work with over here. If you're in a slightly warmer climate, this is probably going to be the better option. And if you just, you're looking for that maximum freshness, this is the fresher take of the two. This one is always my default answer in what is the best first niche fragrance or the first, the safest niche fragrance to blind buy is my first niche fragrance. I always recommend this. This is my default answer because it's really hard not to like this. It gets compared or, or gets mentioned as an alternative to an Aventus. Alternative, sure. Replacement or clone, no. It doesn't smell like Aventus, because uh, I know somebody's going to ask in the comments, but it's one of those fragrances that, the way I've described it, is a fresh, fruity basket, a uh, wicker basket full of fruits, because you get an amalgamation of fruits. I don't get any real smokiness. I don't get a bunch of leather. It's mainly about woods and citrus and fruits. There's actually a fruity notes oil in this fragrance and it's it's beautiful it's so enjoyable um, I've never met anybody that doesn't like the way this smells it's an above average performer without being some monster beast in performance I know some people even with these newer bottles uh, still get really really good performance so this is a great do-it-all this is one that can literally cover every situation you're gonna smell great it's of you know pretty decent quality it doesn't smell like a lower level cheap designer fragrance or anything while at the same time not smelling like some super expensive five hundred to a thousand dollar luxury fragrance so you really can't go wrong here my favorite answer when it comes to what's that one fragrance is Mencera Cidrat Boise. Another one that I picked up recently from the rack stores, well, I say recently, it was this year in 2022, and it's my favorite flanker from this particular line of fragrances, which I have a lot of fragrances that I really enjoy, even the original. There's a few other flankers that I enjoy more than the original, but this one kind of, I guess you could call it the king of the hill in the cool water line for me, is Cool Water Parfum from Davidoff. This stuff is really freaking good. It's got all the makings of a great signature scent because you get some citrus to add that little bit of freshness. You get some a little touch of sweetness. You get a nice little hit of spice. There's some earthy smoked wood tones from this vetiver. And then there's even a little touch of shower gel feel here to add a little bit of clean mass appeal to it. Uh, that's, you know, kind of that soapy clean shower gel feel that works in so many mass appealing blue fragrances these days. Even though there's no Ambroxan listed, it does smell like there is a little bit, but kind of a, for as simplistic of a scent as it is, there's a lot of character in this scent profile. It's not the deepest of and most complex of fragrances, but it's also not the most simplistic at the same time. You can find 50 mLs like this for 25 bucks. When they pop up at the rack stores, I grabbed this 50 mL for $25 at Marshall's. They're in the sub $40 price point from Discounters Online. I think it's a great price. They have great staying power. This stuff really lasts on my skin, eight plus hours solid every single time I spray it. And it's not overwhelmingly loud because not everybody wants that super loud fragrance that you can smell them from across the street. Some people do, 
Sure, some of you watching this right now, as I'm saying this, you're like, oh, you're crazy. If it doesn't fill a room with one spray, I don't want it. There's guys out there like that. This isn't that fragrance. This is gonna give you that life on your skin that most desire. Usually that's the most important thing to not have a skin scent for as long as possible. And with this fragrance, you're gonna get that. You're gonna, like I said, eight plus hours in longevity. It dresses up, it dresses down. It kind of rides that line of not being playful in any way, but not being too serious of a fragrance at all either. So very pronounced, but not too subdued and not even close to being a beast. I think it's in the sweet spot for the scent profile and it's kind of in the wheelhouse of what I like. You get long lasting, you get present without being overwhelming. It's really hard to beat. This is a really, really good flanker. I don't know how they'll beat this in the future because I just like it so much. It's a cool water parfum. A more affordable take on the ever so popular Blue de Chanel is how you can kind of look at this one. While admittedly not the exact same fragrance, you can definitely tell they were going the route of making their own version of Blue de Chanel. That being Missoni Parfum Pour Homme. Really been enjoying this one lately. I've, I know I've been pretty late to the party, but it doesn't change the fact of how good of a fragrance it is. And it's the little things. Pressure sensitive atomizer, magnetic cap, you gotta love stuff like that. $40 range or less depending on bottle size, will get you this fragrance. I recently did a full review on it. You're gonna get beyond that six, seven, even eight hour of longevity lifespan on your skin. At least that's what I would say you should expect. I've seen people uh, comment saying they get even more than that, that they get 10 plus hours. I fall somewhere in that seven to eight hour range on my skin for the most part, uh, which is you know more than enough for me. I don't need 12 hours, but I'll tell you what, as long as I can get in that six to eight hour range, that's kind of the sweet spot for me. And this definitely handles that perfectly fine. It is on the heavier side in the first hour, then admittedly sits a bit close to the skin moving into the second hour uh, with a nice little trail going. This stuff again, dresses up, dresses down because you do get a nice variety of citruses here that really provide that nice inviting mouth-watering citrus freshness that's attractive to so many others. And there's some depth to this scent with notes like birch that provide a lot of smokiness. And there's a little bit of spice here as well. There's a nice hit of ginger that adds this bright, crisp, fresh, spicy edge to it. A little bit of woods in the backdrop. Um, not super complex, but again, just like before, not the most simplistic of scents either. You will get a few subtle changes through its lifespan on your skin. And again, this is one that has a refined edge to it to where it'll dress up very well with a suit. It's one of those fresh fragrances that really works well when you like to dress it up, but it can go as casually as you'd like it to be. It works just fine with a t-shirt as well. Definitely a great signature scent in my personal opinion. Check this one out if you're looking for, you know, great bang for your buck on a signature scent with Missoni Parfum. Speaking of bang for your buck, this is, it still surprises me how much I really like this fragrance because I'm not the type to really enjoy that many earthy vetivers. Sure, I like earthy fragrances, but normally other earthy tones, not necessarily vetiver, but there's so much freshness and variety in this scent to make it be you know, really good at so many different things, really categorizes it as very signature scent worthy in my opinion. We're talking about Lalique, this is Ancre Noir Sport. Still can't believe how big of a fan I am of, am of this fragrance. So you get some citrus up top, there's some watery notes. So it has that mouthwatering, juicy appeal with the bergamot. And then as it starts to settle, you have some aromatics. It's a little, not really much soapiness here, but a little touch of it. And the main thing is there is an earthy vetiver here. It is woody and smoky, but still maintains some freshness. It doesn't come across as too much of a dirty grass feel or anything like that. Um, like more, much more earthy vetivers can be. Performance is above average with you know, bordering in that six to eight hour territory on my skin, which like I told you before, is the sweet spot for me. Not a loud fragrance after an hour, hour and a half, it does calm down quite a bit. Uh, you will get random hits throughout your day, but it has a clean, smooth profile and presence to it um, that has some elegance without being serious. Again, that's what I think makes it such a great signature scent fragrance. Just because it's called sport, doesn't necessarily mean it's a very casual fragrance. Normally when you see a sport flanker or a fragrance with sport in the name, you're gonna think fresh and casual. And yes, there is some fresh and casual appeal to this, but the way the vetiver's done, it provides that earthiness, that smoky tone, the little bit of spices in there. It has that refined notch above that, you know, most sport fragrances 
don't have. So this one will definitely dress up just as well as it will dress down, which I think deems it ideal, especially on a you know really low budget, to get something quality that you can wear for anything and everything. As long as you like vetiver, you're bound to like this. And it's right around that $30 price point, you can get a 100 milliliter bottle and it's hyper versatile, which is what you want with a signature scent fragrance. This is definitely signature scent worthy in my opinion. Ancre Noir Sport. Last but not least, this may be a bit of a surprising pick for you guys. Um, I've worn it again recently. And uh, so it's been a little while since I've spent time with it. And it reminded me why this is my favorite version of Dior Sauvage. This is Dior Sauvage Parfum. This is my gigantic 200 milliliter bottle. You know, Dior Sauvage, Eau de Toilette, and the Eau de Parfum get all the love. Elixir's been a hype beast since it came out. I think Cool Spray's been discontinued. Good riddance. <laughs> I don't need an aerosol can for $100. Um, but I mean, I've smelled it. It smells good. I just, I never deemed it worthy over any of the other versions. This one is kind of the dark horse of the line at this point, and it's, it's always been my favorite, even over Elixir, because it's no secret that I love spicy fragrances. Here, you're getting some creaminess from the sandalwood. You're getting a little bit of smokiness, because there is olibanum, and it's a pretty strong presence. It provides this nice, this nice smoky tone without it being too smoky. There's a darkness to it. It's a little bit sweeter than the other versions, and you still maintain that little touch of the Ambroxan shower gel DNA that the line is known for. <clears throat> not on the lower side of a touch of the DNA like Elixir, but definitely not as closely tied to the EDT as the EDP is. So this one actually provides almost a a nighttime appeal because it's got such a dark edge to it, but there's still so much freshness here. You get some citrus up top. It still has some nice aromatics, that clean soapy feel. Um, the shower gel tone is there, because like I said, lavender, and even though they don't list Ambroxan, you still smell the Ambroxan here. And it's just basically taking the Sauvage DNA and smoothing it out polishing it, refining it, classing it up a bit, in my personal opinion. This one's not as screechy, edgy, and loud and in your face as the Eau de Toilette and the Eau de Parfum. This is a little bit more subdued, but anosmia is a real issue. Some people think this is not a great performer, and it's actually just anosmia. I've gotten a compliment well into eight, nine, ten hours of wearing this fragrance, and they're not, you know, on my neck smelling my skin. Uh, so this is one that I think dresses up better than all the other Dior Sauvages, to be honest with you, especially in evening situations, but still has enough freshness and mass appeal to work on a summer's day. It really does. I think this is a great fragrance across the board, probably more signature scent worthy than even the Eau de Toilette, believe it or not. For as much as most people will go that route, and I understand why, and I'm not saying that EDT and EDP aren't great signature scents, because they are, that's one of the you know highlights of this line is no matter which one you get, you can wear it for everything. I think for my personal taste, yes, this is probably the most expensive one besides the Elixir, but I think this is the most rewarding as far as enjoyment, versatility, mass appeal, and just a nice refined edge. It's Dior Sauvage Parfum. Well, that's my five picks, and uh, now we have to tag somebody, and I didn't... The last couple of times I did a tag video, I feel like it's best to just do an open tag because in the event that you're someone that makes fragrance content anywhere, not just YouTube, but Instagram, Facebook, wherever, if you deem this is a great piece of content for you to make and you'd like to do it, by all means, you're tagged. I think open tags are the best route to go. That way there's no pressure for anybody to go ahead and do it. And at the same time, everybody can be included. At the, you know, if you want to do it, do it. You know, I think that's one of the beauties of doing it that way. And until next time, do me a real quick favor: go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate all the feedback, and I love hearing from you guys. Do you have any of these five? Have you tried them, and what do you think about them? Or did something you hear in this video intrigue you about them, and you feel like you need to try them? I'd love to see what you guys think down below. Once again, Randy, thank you for the tag. Until next time, guys. If you get any of these fragrances and you give them a spray now, 
pretty confident you'll thank me later because I deem them great for literally every situation. Have a good one. Thank you.